But allow me tonight to minister to you on the subject titled Tearing Down Satanic Altars. Tearing Down Satanic Altars. If you have your Bible, quickly go with me to the book of Mark chapter 4. And we're going to read from verse 35. Now I'm going to take you through the two accounts where Jesus is, uh, is involved there. But the reason why we're going to go through the two accounts is for you to be able to match the story. Because for everything that happens, there is a reason. That's why the reason for both accounts. So that you understand that they both go hand in hand. Amen? Let us bow our heads and pray. Holy Spirit of God, my helper, my paraclete, my advocate, my teacher, supply all the knowledge, supply all the wisdom, lead that I may follow. Speak through my mouth and think through my mind. Holy Spirit of God, I hereby relinquish control and I allow you, Spirit of the living God, to use me as a willing vessel in the name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will set your people free and that the blood of Jesus, Holy Father, will permeate this atmosphere and that the blood of Jesus will take over this area for Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. Let thy will be done here on earth, Heavenly Father, as it is in heaven, in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone who loves the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Just so give me that. Now, Mark chapter 4 and 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him just as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the rear of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him, and said unto him, Teacher, care you not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, say rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? For how is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of men is this? That even the wind and the sea, they obey him. Hallelujah. Amen. For many of us here, we are thinking that maybe it was just a song, just like each and every one of us, one time you just woke out of the house and you realize that there's a storm. You realize that there's a, there's a strong wind. There's a, there's, there's a dust. It's a manly more. Yeah? And you quickly go back in. But you realize that everything that can move is also moving. Yeah. Amen. Now you would think it's just a storm and it's just passing by. But this storm that brought fear into the disciples of Jesus Christ was not an ordinary storm. This was a song to oppose the agenda of the kingdom of God. Amen. Because every time Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, they were all about doing the Father's business. Amen. They never went anywhere for the sake of going anywhere. Jesus was never bored, even on, on any single day, he was never bored. Every single day, Jesus was living on purpose. And as they were going somewhere, which we're going to get to now, the song came 
every time in life when you are going somewhere with your life where God wants you to go you will experience the storm yes. cannot rebuke the storm that comes from the Father Amen. Okay. because heaven has one voice yeah. okay. now if heaven is saying this is my beloved son yeah. heaven speaks as one voice there was no way that the Holy Spirit can speak and Jesus can speak and the Father can speak. Yes. When heaven speaks, it speaks in alignment. So if Jesus rebukes, that means heaven is rebuking. Okay. So it means that the enemy has access to bring the storm. Okay. Okay. The enemy has access to bring the rain. The enemy has access to bring the floods. But this time the enemy wanted to bring the stop to stop them, to make them turn away from where they were going. So every time you choose Jesus, and then the Tony Chatafala no feed. It's the enemy bringing the storms to try and tell you, no, this thing is not working. Yeah. 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 It's because now you're so desperate that you want a quick solution. Yeah. Now the enemy wants you to consider the quick solution and to give up on a bigger picture. Yeah. And Jesus rebuked the storm. Now, nothing just happens. Everything that happens in our lives happens but for a reason. Pastor K, you cannot just move from the garage and go into a land and expect everything to fall into place. The moment you move into the direction where God wants you to go into a territory, you will meet the devils of the territory. Am I speaking to somebody? So now every time we shift into the direction of God, we will experience the demonic spirits that operate in that area. Yeah. The demonic spirits are not interested in you preaching the gospel. Yeah. They are interested in you taking over their territory because they have the territory. And if you come in and you bring the blood of Jesus and you bring the spirit of God, that means they have to come out of the territory because God and the devil cannot be in the same place. Every time God comes into an atmosphere, the devil has to get out of an atmosphere. And the devil is holding on to an atmosphere because the devil has many people bound in South Africa. We've got many people bound in Phosphorus. But I'm here to declare and to decree that we are about to take over Phosphorus for Jesus. We are about to bring the Spirit of God. We are about to turn this area into a Holy Ghost hub. And I speak into someone we're going to turn this area into an atmosphere of Jesus. That the sick will be healed. That the lame will stand up from the wheelchair and where am I speaking to someone? Child of God, we need to shift the atmosphere of the enemy and push back the powers of darkness. Because Batrabah Honu Sebeta is because of the powers of darkness. The enemy is busy bringing stuff into people's lives. He's shoving things into people's lives. But today I declare that not today. Not today. Begin to stumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, daddy. 
preparation of a storm. Now let's see after overcoming the storm, because every time you overcome the storms, you get to your destiny. That's why the word during the week, never give up on God, no matter what comes your way. Masadi wa palo yamadi ended up getting a miracle because she never gave up no matter what came her way. 12 years with the flow of blood, not just the flow, but a heavy flow of blood is not just two years. But she kept the faith and said, if only I may but touch. She held on to those words because words are a creative power of God. I said to you last week that when your words align with what is in your heart, explosion comes, which is the explosion of faith. Now let's get to understand. And they came over unto the other side, when? After the storm. Yeah. Now, on this side, we're going to understand the reason for the storm. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he came out of the ship, immediately, met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit Ooh. say unclean spirit where he's dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains because he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been wrenched apart by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man subdue him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs trying and cutting himself with stones but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him never be flattered by worship never be flattered by worship that woman in the book of Acts chapter 16 when she was making noise and saying that these are the servants of God the servants of the most high God Paul understood that you cannot be flattered by praise so now these demonic spirits they run to Jesus not away from Jesus they run to Jesus they got no choice now because they tried to stop him on the other side but he comes the storm so he gets into the territory where they operate because the entire agenda was to stop him from coming into that territory because he had to deal with what was in operation in that territory so they have to run to him in order to bluff him in order to say oh, we are worshipping in this area you know you are the most holy God but we serve a God that even when you try and bring worship he looks at you and he says how many are you that's our God the God who descends the God who does not operate outside in he operates inside out Come on, teacher. Never be flattered by what you see. Yeah. Be led by the Spirit of God. Because the book of Romans says, they that are led by the Spirit of God. They, they, not all men, they that are led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons and daughters of God. He ran and worshipped Jesus and tried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus? You son of the most high God. The demons know that he is the son of the most high. Not the high God, the most high. The God who sits in the third heaven, not in the first heaven. Son of the Most High God, I, I 
I show you by God. The demons are saying, I show you by God. That you torment me not. For he had said unto him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Lichion. Meaning that we are no less than 12,000. And he begged him much that he would not send them away of the country. <laughs> the issue is not about the man who was bound. The issue was about the country. So they are begging the one who casts out devils. Don't cast us out of the country. Now every time God brings an apostolic ministry into a town, yeah. okay. Okay. there will be demons that become agitated. Yeah. Because now we are on our faith. Am I speaking to someone? Am I speaking to someone? When an apostolic ministry comes into a town, it comes to take over. An apostolic ministry does not build with noble. An apostolic ministry casts out devils because the Spirit of God cannot operate with devils in the same place. Please do not get us out of this town. Now, there was there near to the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the demons begged him saying send us into the swine that we may enter into them and Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea there were about 2,000 and were drowned in the sea now they begged Jesus but rather because they know that if they go into the head of swans they are still in the country they are still in the territory. Yeah. People of God, we are just shells. Yeah. Okay. We are vessels. Yeah. We are influenced by the spirits in our territories. Amen. Yeah, teacher. Now the more principalities and the powers operating in a certain area, they are there to influence the minds of the people in that area. It's not God's will that one town can have such a high rate of unemployment. The other day, I was taking my wife to Pretoria and we came here to drop certain things and it was during the day, come on 12. And as we left, and she said to me, Because I was straight, I look at all that. Everybody was just out somewhere sitting, but you see more to know more facts. And she said, Are people not working? I said, that's the spirit that is in operation in this town. People of God, yeah. Yeah. i 
generation. Now, if you're bound by spirit in your brain, when he comes down, the spirit has to become restless in your body. That is why you feel something moving drastically inside of you. It's because the heaven has come down. Come on, teacher. So they had to run towards Jesus yeah. to beg him. Now we've got a problem, and therefore we're going to come against this church. But there is a God who carries the Spirit of God. If the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if the same Spirit dwells inside of you, it shall quicken your mortal body. You will cast out devils. You will remove every barrier of the enemy. You will destroy the destroyer. You will come from the enemy, and you will destroy this enemy. You will Eighteen-year-old, hey! or top, how naturally walk up blue. Hey! Hey! It's the powers. 
Jesus. Look at any age. They are joy. Too expensive. By associated by Batamangari exotic cars. It's powers influencing you that in order for you to be relevant, you must go drink expensive liquor. Whether it's expensive or it's cheap, it's liquor. It's the same agenda in that liquor. Cheap or expensive. church how 
Hallelujah. Okay. That shrine is an altar. He speaks, or she speaks, to his God. God. Yeah. We look up a It's an altar. Anything that does not have an altar has no power. Power comes from the altar. I will not know you have a lawyer as an altar. For God, God, God's center of connection between Himself and you is an altar. Yeah. Oh my God. Now, when God heals you, when I feel it again, who do I tell it? A little ring, a and a little covenant to who you are. Then He heals you for the sake of His altar. to do anything, say anything, in your life. Let's go to the next slide. Listen to what our Lord Jesus says here. He says, I don't have much more time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me. What does he mean then? Who's the ruler of this world? The ruler of this world is Satan. But he says he's got nothing on me. What does he mean? He means that I've got no door open for him. So there is no way that the devil can enter Jesus. Because Jesus has no door open. He says, I do nothing except what I see the Father do. Meaning that he was in alignment with what God was doing all the time. When God says do this, he did it. Hallelujah. Demons need a body to operate. Principalities need a territory to rule. When Satan establishes that altar, it might be evil, but listen to this. It's not illegal. Satan can never have an illegal altar. Now, if Satan is able to come into this territory and take over this territory, into this territory, therefore it's legal. The devil never touches anything without God's permission. How some hold but that's not a job. But for Satan to touch Job, he had to go to God and ask God for permission to touch him. Now, it's not always like that, but there are instances. I've always told you that heaven operates like a court of law. Now, there are instances where they look in church, they are rad, and they are in favor of you, but who party go against when they are over when. So they are forced to let you go down. So even though God loves you, but if Satan presents evidence as the accuser of brethren, he presents evidence that this person is living in sin. Give a back. One, two, three. Then that's how God loses a case. But he doesn't lose a case by himself. He loses your case. Yeah. Meaning that you open the door. You gave him ammunition yeah. to destroy your life. There is no body oil created to a fail the failure based on the doors that we open for the deceiver of brethren to come and to steal, to kill, and to destroy what? What God has given to you and I. Come on, go deeper. Am I speaking? 
kitu samburi. Tena ni wase uzana yute. So he never touches anything of anyone without God's permission or legal right. Now if this area it can work kima dimona and the principalities. It's not that Satan is powerful. It's because we gave him power to do it. Because all authority belongs to you and I. So every time Satan comes and do something, it's because there's an open door. Now, what doors are we opening in areas? Because you're only thinking of yourself as a door. A town has a door. So, and how do we open up for principalities to rule this territory? Ancestral spirits. Let's am sebe tu babadimo. Let's have a babadimo. You've got something in common with the devil. Therefore, he's gonna come in. Satan will never come into your life unless you've got something in common with him. When you're living in sin, sin is his greatest friend. He comes into your life. Satan cannot attach himself to your life if there's nothing that looks like him. It's a colossal yeah. Come on, Dad. Hey. Now, generational cases, sicknesses, behaviors in people's lives, early pregnancies. and the powers that are influencing people in that area. Let me tell you something. What defeats you goes to your children. Now, how to take a fair? We have a name by her. I go to her to let her buy Now, if you go into a house where you find that any pregnancy is rife, check the generations past. So sometimes you think you're fighting the devil, but you are fighting the old devil who conquered your mother.
evangelist. But when God wants to gather intelligence, when God wants to take over intelligence, when God wants to bulldoze himself into intelligence, he brings an apostle into it. He brings the apostolic anointing to cast out devils, to destroy the works of Satan, to destroy the plan and the strategies of the enemy in the end. He will bring an apostolic power because the apostolic governs. The apostolic comes with boldness.
Because you got your healing. 
in. When you go home, don't go into the village. Yeah. Don't go there. That's why I've got people in the church whom I wish I can tell them to Taheno. But I can't because I don't have a solution. Because unfortunately they don't get to put. But I know in my heart. You see, my daughter, as a daughter, I don't only see you. Because you're my daughter. You see, everything that becomes a son and a daughter to me, I don't see you. I see you, I see through you, and I see around you. So when I deliver you, I know what is causing you to be where you are. And I know when that thing is in you yet. So now when I say to you, all right, some of you are the move. We are delivered in the, the soil of the house, the ground. Yeah. Yeah. But now, do we really understand who made that ground to be like that? Yeah. If those people are still in that house, the ground will remain. Oh my, oh my, oh my. 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 Oh Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh Every day, every day at all, it's to do. That's not fair. Okay, I'm not going to say it again. Every single day, when I do a I do thing.
suffocating. And I told you that one of my daughters went past and others were passing. And when I asked God, why others are passing? But now Peter and Nabah are known. They are not the leaders of the mandate. The principalities, they want to destroy and to suffocate the leader. Because if you tame the leader, you kill the church. <laughs> Ele 
ashinde salum maru aluna atalu kulwa misebeti aluna italu kulwa with god's help unemployment is so rife in this area there's a low rate of married couples here very low rate but my other very few it's a spirit it's a spirit there are so many taverns in Fusuras witchcraft it's difficult to prosper in Fusuras Breakthroughs are hard to come by in this area because of the principalities and the powers in this area. But today we are saying, God, let thy will be done here in this town as it is in heaven. Because in heaven I'm a cupero. In heaven I'm a sukuna. In heaven there's peace. In heaven there's world. In heaven do we have? Number one, idolatry. What is idolatry? Giving anything that is not God, the position of God. You are making that thing an idol. Never give anybody in your life position. Because you are putting that person's life in danger. God is a jealous God. It makes the enemy or it gives him an opportunity to come into your life if it becomes an idol. The moment you have an idol in your life, demons can attach to those spirits because you have an open door. Now you cannot have an idol and not have an open door. So an idol get anything attention I'm doing, but you're not seeing doing. that thing is an open door in your life and the demons can come into your life because of that thing God doesn't share his glory with anything the Philistines they ran with it and I'm a feature with my team but you got to get out of the temple and then I'm going to act of the covenant by bear more the presence of God by bear on the side, but bear do one abo on a dagon on the side. God does not share His glory. Mudiman got dagon. I get dagon again. Tim Dimas chant. He said, "But I'm see abo bar. I have dagon. Mudiman abo. I have bar. I'm Tim Wabo. I'm Tim Opila. Mudim."
comes and attaches to it. If there is no space for the enemy to come in. Number three, religious spirits. These are the churches that are antichrist spirit. To be antichrist is to be anti-anointing. Now, they don't believe in miracles. They don't believe in the presence of God. Now, it's like you are showing off when you are crying on the floor under the power of God. You are showing off. Those spirits are anti-Christ. They are anti-healing of the sick. They are anti-deliverance. Those spirits are anti-Christ. Those are the religious spirits. They say if it's like that, it's not God. But what ministry was Jesus doing? And who is the head of our church? So those people are not just being funny. They are being ruled by the religious spirit. Am I speaking to somebody? Yeah. Am I speaking to somebody? Yeah. Now, altars have a dedicated human attendant. You cannot have an altar if it cannot be attended to on a daily basis. Now, every altar, it has a dedicated person that attends to it all the time. Now, if one is trying, it is a sacrifice into that altar. That is why you can never tell You are bringing what? Sacrifice. What does a sacrifice do for an altar? It gives power to the altar. And also, in the righteousness form, when you go into the house of the Lord, the Lord says, never come to my house empty-handed. When you sow seed into the house of the Lord, what are you doing? You are empowering the work of God in that altar. So, when I the altar to occultic, say, look, give a tamati as a sacrifice. Now, now they tell you that we can give you the money that you need but you need to sacrifice somebody in your family no but alright it to mama I'll be pregnant Tina will steal that child while they're in the bed then we say it's a miscarriage. That child is going to be a sacrifice needed for you to have wealth. You will have wealth, but you will lose family members. And certain people in this atmosphere right now, there's something happening to you now. Because there are altars operating in your family. But tonight, oh, yes. God is changing your soul. Oh, yes. God is going to break every altar. Because we're going to repent on behalf of those who came before us. We are not going to suffer for what our families have done. We are going to repent on their behalf and we're going to ask God that God help me I want a better life am I speaking to somebody am I speaking to somebody people of God the cross was an altar that is why Jesus had to spill blood there it was a sacrifice for Pulusoyakalue God works through altars God will always require an altar to bring a drastic change in the life of the community. I'm gonna stop right there. But right now I want you, I want everybody to 
place their hand on their head. I want you to follow my instructions. Something is going to happen here. There are certain things 